Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a transcript directly from YouTube using only Python. And the best thing about this is that you're not going to have to do anything manually. Everything's going to be done automatically. We're going to get the transcript. We're going to be able to translate it. And we're even going to generate some subtitles that you can use on your own YouTube videos. If you own a YouTube channel and you try to do subtitles manually, you know that this is a very long, boring, and very error prone process. And that's what makes it perfect for automation. So that's the kind of thing that you actually want to have something that's repetitive and you have to do the same process over and over again. That's the kind of stuff that you can actually automate using Python. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it exactly for your videos. For this project, we're going to use a module called YouTube Transcript API, which is going to give us access to a lot of methods to get information from the YouTube video and even translate it without doing much work ourselves. Since this is not a very common module to have installed, our first step is going to be to install it. And this is going to depend on what operating system you're using and what version of Python you have installed. For me, I'm obviously using Windows and the version of Python that I'm using is Conda. So in order to install this module, I'm going to open my Anaconda prompt and then use this command, conda install minus C, conda forge, space, YouTube transcript API. Click enter and that's going to build all the dependencies and just check whatever I need to install. And it's going to tell me if I want to install it. I'm just going to click yes and give it an enter and then it's going to install. It's going to take a little while, but once it's done, you'll get your prompt just as usual. If your installation of Python is just a regular one and not Conda, then you can use this command pip install YouTube transcript API and that should make the trick. Now that we have this module installed, we want to test that it's working. For this, we're going to type Python in our prompt or terminal, and then you have to import the module. If it doesn't give you any error, then you're ready to go. The next thing we're going to need is a video. What video do you want to get the transcript for or build subtitles? In this example, I'm going to use one of my videos, which is in Spanish, and we're going to generate the transcript in Spanish so I can put it into a blog post. And also we're going to get the transcript in English and generate some subtitles so we can add it to the video in YouTube. And what we need from this video is actually the video ID. And the video ID is actually in the, in the link here. It's the part after the equal sign. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to store this into one variable called video ID. It's going to be a string. So I'm just going to put it there. That's the first thing that we're going to need. Now we need to import the API, which we just installed. This is very simple with one line. And to make this clearer, I'm going to wrap it inside one function name called main. Now, this is the part where it starts to get interesting. We're going to pull all the data on this YouTube video to get all the transcripts. This is going to give us how many languages this video is available on. For that, we're going to use a function called list transcripts. And this function only needs one parameter, which is our video ID, which we already have in the vid ID variable. Cool. This is going to return us a lot of valuable information regarding the transcripts in the video, like which ones are available and what subtitles are also available. And even better, it's going to tell us to what languages we can translate those. So let's print it just to see, so you can see what we're looking at. And we're going to need to call this. So let's just say main. Cool. Now I can run it and see. And it's saying that there's no manually created subtitles for this video, which is true. And then the generated, the automatically generated subtitles are in Spanish with, with the key ES. <laughs> and then the coolest part, in my opinion, is that we can translate this automatically generated subtitles to any one of these languages. Wow. And we can do that like with a couple of clicks. It's going to be very simple and very cool. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to comment this so we can move on. This works on any YouTube video and you don't need to be the owner of that channel. So now we know what language is available and that's what we're going to call our base language. And this is going to be a string, which in this case is going to be Spanish. Well, the key for that language, for that, for the matter of fact. And then we're going to call what's going to be our target language or the wanted language. And that in this case, it's going to be in English. So that's going to be EN. So our next step in this project is going to fetch the language that we already know that exists. So let's call it base. And this is going to be an object. So I'll just call it base object. And we're going to use our transcripts that we pulled before. And we're going to say find a transcript. Now for this function, we need to give it a list. So I'm just going to put like these brackets and inside you want to put the language that you want to get a transcript for. And we have that conveniently in a variable called base language. This is going to return to us an object of the type transcript and we don't want to deal with that. So we need to convert this into something that we can use. And I'm going to store this into base transcript and 
To do that, I'm gonna just, I just need to call my object and say fetch. And this is gonna return to us an object that we can actually manipulate and use and understand. Let's print it so you can see what I'm talking about. The fetch function is gonna return to us a list that contains a dictionary per entry in, a, in the subtitle that we just uh, extracted from the YouTube video. And each one of those dictionaries is gonna have three keys. The first one is text. Let me make this a little bigger. The second one is start, which is the time when this text is supposed to start and the duration of that text. And it's gonna have a, a lot of those. So as you can see, I can go there and it's, it's got a lot because it's the, all the data that you need to build a subtitle for this particular video. I'm gonna comment this print so it's not bothering us anymore. And if you think about it, we have all the text and you could loop through this list and just print it out to a file. But you don't have to do that because this module actually has some text formatters that will do most of the work for you. From our, our module, the YouTube transcript API dot formatters, we're going to import. Oh, it's already there. This format that's called text formatter. And this is going to give us access to a formatter that's going to format this object and it's going to allow us to print it in a much easier way. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing we're going to need is an instance of this text formatter. We get access to a lot of cool stuff. And the first one is going to be format transcript. And this function requires us a transcript as it says just there. So I'm going to say base transcript and I'm going to store all this in a variable called base text. What that is gonna do is just gonna return to us a string that we can print into a file. And now we can use just a simple open statement. For this, I'm gonna use a, a folder called transcript so we can put everything into there and just keep things organized. And I'm gonna call my file with my base language, which in this case is gonna be ES for Spanish, underscore transcript dot text. Very simple stuff. And then I'm just gonna say F dot write, and I'm gonna give my base text. Since we're not verifying that the folder exists to keep things simple, I'm just going to make sure that the folder is, exists. And now there we go. And it's empty. Let's run it and see what happens. I run it. It's finished. And now we have a Spanish transcript. And if I pull it into my editor, I can see that I, <laughs> it's got some error with the file, but that's just because it's in Spanish, but we have everything. And yes, you can see it's pretty nice. We got the, the whole transcript and it can, this can be very useful if you want to turn your videos into blog posts, because then by just running this tool, you get the transcript <laughs> without a lot of work. All right. So that's going pretty cool, pretty smoothly. But now the best part and the, the actually the part that I wanted the most is to get subtitles in a different language. And for that, we have to translate. So I added a couple of print statements there so we can know what's going on. First, we need to know if the transcript that we have is actually translatable. Our base object, which we found with the find transcript function, has one very interesting uh, parameter that says it's translatable. And that is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, if this is not true, then we're not going to be able to translate it. So let's just print something here so we can know what the hell's going on. But if it is, then we can use one of the functions from our module to do this for us. So we're going to use our base object dot translate. And the only parameter that this function needs is the language that you want it to be translated to. So this is going to be wanted language. And this is going to return to us an object, which just the same way that this one did. So we want to call fetch on it so we can use it for our particular needs. Oh, this is actually, and we, we need to store this into a variable, which is going to be wanted dot transcript. Uh, I'm just going to call, trying to be consistent with my other naming variable naming. <laughs> if it turns that we cannot translate it, then we just print something and quit our program. So if we got here, it means that our, our function was successful and we can actually print it. So let's just see what's underneath the hood here on wanted transcript. I'm going to run it. All right. So you can see it's the same type of object. We got a list with a dictionary with three keys, text, start and duration. But take a look at this. It's now in English. Cool. Pretty cool, right? So now we only have two things left to do. We want to get the transcript in this new language and we want to get the subtitles that we can use in our YouTube video so we don't have to type them manually, which is a pain in the ass, if you believe me. We already did this for our base language, so we can pretty much copy this and just change some variable names.
that should get us the transcript and we can run it just pretty quickly to see if we get it so let's check our folder and we have two files so it's looking pretty good <laughs> and take a look at this with just a couple lines of codes we already have a transcript in a translated language without any work at all cool now our final step is going to be to get the subtitles because if you think about it our object here contains the text the starting and the duration so we could build a subtitled file an srt file and just put it into our youtube video and be done with it right well yes you could do that but then there's another way like an easier way we can use our youtube transcript api that formatters and there's another formatter called web tt formatter and this is just a subtitle type of format that is conveniently supported by youtube so we're going to do a very similar thing to what we did with our text formatter first we need an instance of it i'm going to see say wanted subs i'm going to use my formatter dot format transcript and give it my wanted transcript then i'm going to do something very similar so i'm just going to copy it And the extension for this is VTT. So we're going to use that. And everything else is going to remain the same. Instead, uh, No, I'm going to change this one. And that should do the trick. All right. So I'm going to execute this. First of all, this is my folder. I'm going to delete it just so it's empty. And now I'm going to run our script. Here we go. We got writing Spanish transcript done. Then we have this thing, which I'm going to comment. <laughs> then we have... Our transcript in English, done. Then we have our subtitles in English, done. So now if we look at the transcript folder, we have three files and this is looking pretty good. I can open this in my editor. If you're familiar with SRT files or subtitle tracks, this is just the way it looks. At the beginning is at what time the subtitle track piece is gonna start and then when it's gonna end. And then we have the text which is supposed to be displayed during that time and just keep doing that until you get to the end of the video pretty much and you can actually use this file to add subtitles to your youtube videos which is pretty cool this is exactly what i wanted to do and just automate the hell out of this so if you go into your youtube studio the video that you want you click here on subtitles then you got the subtitles that are already available i can click add language i'm going to select english because that's a the one that I care about, then I'm going to click add subtitles. This is going to give us a couple of options and you want to do this upload file with timing, continue, then just go to the subtitle track that you just generated, click on it, open. It's going to show a couple errors because this tool is not perfect, but then just click allow errors and continue. And now you have it like everything is pretty much done for you. But and here's a, a little bit of a disclaimer. If you've used translation process for anything before, you know that it's not perfect. There's a lot of errors regarding the intent of what you're saying, uh, words in other languages, and, and just slang is not translated correctly. So I definitely do not suggest that you should do this and just upload it as it is. It's going to be definitely better than nothing, but it's going to have some errors. What I usually do here at this stage is I just go through the video here in this in the YouTube Studio app and just make sure that things are correct. You know, like I'll check and if the intent is not correct or, or if something is misspelled, I'll just change it manually. And it's much easier than doing everything manually by yourself. Believe me. I hope that you got some value out of this. I wanted to do a video about it for two reasons. First of all, I think that if I wanted this, somebody else might need it as well. And Okay, here it is for you. <laughs> I hope it's useful. And the second part is because this is actually a great example of how you can automate a boring, long, tedious and error prone task using Python to, so it could be done automatically and you can just forget about it and just save a bunch of time, obviously. And the most important part is going to be better done. It's going to take you like no time at all and it's going to be very consistent. As always, you're going to find a link down in the description with, the, with all the code that we just wrote in this video, so you can use it for yourself. I hope that this script can actually help you and save you a lot of time. And if it does, remember to smash the like button. And if you would like to see another example of automation, take a look at this video. Here, I took the Sudoku from the New York Times, solved it automatically, and then uploaded it back to the New York Times page. Everything using just Python. So it's a great project to learn automation and just 
another example of what you can do with Python. Anyway, that's it for this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.